In this video, I'm gonna show you how to animate objects in the background of your video. Now, if you wanna follow along with this tutorial, I've included this file here, which you can download from the description below. And once you've imported that, we're just gonna right click and create a new comp from selection. Now you can use the same technique to pretty much animate anything that's either a building or something in the background of your video. Now with that layer selected, we're going to come up to effect, down to Boris Effects Mocker, and then use Mocker AE. Then we're just going to click this and open it up. So now we have our file in Mocha. What we actually want to do is draw a mask around this tower in the background. And I want to isolate that from the foreground of my video. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna grab the spline tool here and I'm just gonna start drawing a really rough mask. I'm holding Z on my keyboard here to actually zoom in. And we want to draw a mask here that goes around our tower. So I'm trying to isolate the things here that are in the foreground. I don't want these parts. I only want to keep my tower in the background. So I'm using X here to move around the screen. And once I've roughly isolated that, I'm just going to right click and that's just going to create that mask. Now also here, I don't have to create a perfect edge of this tower. And the reason for that is you can see that this background is actually a gray color. And we're actually just going to remove that using a different technique. Now, if you had clouds and things behind here, you can still use that same or similar sort of technique. But if you need to, you can just create a perfect mask that goes around your entire object like this tower or whatever it is you're trying to basically animate. Now, once I think I've got that in the perfect spot, I'm just going to also turn on all of these properties down here. And then what I actually want to do is actually start tracking forward. Now you'll see that Mocha actually does a really good job of creating a very clean track. And that's the reason that I use it for this exact purpose here. Now it's quite common for the track to actually slip during the track. And I'm going to show you how to actually fix that because it's much easier to fix in Mocha than it is in After Effects. So now that that's finished there, I'm just gonna go back to where we started here and I'm just gonna track backwards. Now what you're going to notice here is if I actually scroll forward, you can see that the mask is not actually perfect. Now the reason for this is that you've actually got a changing perspective. So something in the foreground here is actually moving at a different rate to the tower that's actually further away from the camera. So you can see there's a bit of movement there. Now we need this mask to follow the edge here. And the great thing about Mocha is that if I go through here and just adjust a few of these, all these mask paths here, you'll see it creates these little green dots here. And what it actually does is it updates everything on the timeline to sort of match that change. So it's not it's not changing that exact point, it's updating all the other points in between where I started to then to actually animate properly according to that move. Now it doesn't have to be perfect here, I'm just looking roughly to line this up as best I can. So once I think I've got that in a pretty good position, I can just zoom out here <clears throat> just to make sure that we've got everything in our mask. Now just up here, I just wanna cut out this tree very slightly, because I don't want that to be a part of the mask. So I'm just gonna remove that here very slightly, and then I can animate this out like this. So that looks pretty good. So now all I need to do is we just need to save this, then we can go back to After Effects and continue on. So I'm just going to hit Save Project, then I can just close this. Now, as soon as we go back into After Effects, nothing actually happens. So what I actually do is I come up here and under the Mocha AE settings, I come down to the mat and then I just hit Create Mask. So now we have our tower on its own layer. We actually want to take this layer and what I'm actually going to do is just duplicate it. And with that bottom layer selector, I'm just gonna turn off this top layer here. I'm gonna come down to the mask settings and I want to subtract this. So now we have an empty spot where the tower should actually be. Now the next part of this is we want to actually remove the sky. Now, as I said before, because our sky is actually gray, it makes this process really easy because we can use the extract tool. So with our bottom layer selected, I'm going to come up to effect, down to king, and I want to add the extract. Now what I'm going to do is just start dragging down on the white point, and you'll see it's gonna start removing. So I'm just bringing that down until it's starting to just remove the edge of the building here. 
I'm just gonna bump this up very slightly because we wanna keep the building. And then I'm gonna drag this bottom part up and that's gonna create a bit of a feather on this. So that looks quite nice there. Once we've got that, then all we need to do is actually just copy this and paste it onto our tower layer. So I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna turn on my tower layer and paste this straight back on top. So now we have our two layers. And the other thing I want to do is I'm just also going to right click and create a new solid. Now the solid can be whatever color you want. I'm just gonna drag this to the background. Then I want to come up to effect down to generate and I want to add the gradient ramp here. Now, if we just come back to that layer and just turn off our extract for a second, we're going to create a color ramp that runs from say here down to here. And what I want to do is I want to take a sample of that color up here and I want to take a sample of that color down here. So I'm just trying to minimize the edge of this mask here. So I'm just going to keep adjusting these until I get it roughly where I need it. So that looks pretty good there. We can't really see that mask. Then I'm just actually going to turn on the extract tool again. So we end up with a sky that looks pretty close to where we actually started. So it looks pretty good. So now we're ready to actually animate our tower in the background. So what we're going to do is I just want my tower, you want to decide when you want your tower to actually come in. So I'm gonna have it animate in here at about the one second mark. And I can just simply come down and create a position keyframe here. I'm hitting Y on my keyboard. I'm just gonna move this anchor point here. And I'm also just gonna come across here and make another position keyframe and animate this down. So I'm bringing it just out of my shot here or just behind my layer. I'm also going to drop this behind my foreground layer so it disappears. And you can see we've already got that animation of the tower popping up. Another thing we can also do here is add a, a bit of motion blur and speed up this animation. So we do that simply by clicking this icon here on that layer and that's gonna add a little bit of motion blur. And then I'm gonna select those two keyframes, come down to keyframe assist to make them easy ease. And if I go to my graph editor, you can see you can actually just smooth out that animation. So it looks a little bit better there. Now, one other thing I did in my original composition is I also animated the flag popping up here. Now you can do that just by simply repeating that same process again. I created a second mask, which went around my flag, and then I animated that and subtracted it from my layer above here. So I created the second mask, which tracked around my flagpole, and then I actually subtracted that. And then I created another layer with just the flag on it, and then animated that to pop up just after the tower comes up. So it's taking the same steps of what we just did and it's just a matter of repeating them as many times as you need to get the desired effects. So if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.